Zero Accounting Software 2023. Advanced Customer Payment or Unearned Revenue. Get ready to be an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being Get Great Guitars. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click on the tab up top so we can duplicate it. And then we're going to right click on the tab up top and duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle. Accounting drop down. Let's open up the balance sheet. We're going to tab to the right. Accounting drop down. Instead of the income statement, we're going to open up that comparative income statement we set up in a prior presentation. It's showing both January and February of the current year. We're currently working on the second month of February. Let's go back to the balance sheet and then drop down on the date range, customizing it to 2023, the end of it, and we'll update that report as well. Okay, so now we're gonna imagine we have an advanced payment type of situation. And so to analyze this, let's take a look at the flowchart. So I'm gonna to go to a flowchart, which is a screenshot of a QuickBooks desktop homepage, but we're just using it to look at the flow of note forms in a normal kind of accounting process. We're looking at the revenue cycle. Now remember the revenue cycle will be dependent on the type of industry we are in. We can't just pick what we're gonna do. Whatever our business is will dictate how we're gonna to have to deal with how we're gonna be collecting our revenue. At the end of the cycle, however, no matter what cycle we use, we expect to have revenue being increased for uh, the sale of goods and services or cash to be increased because of the sales of goods and services. So the easiest system we can think of would be one where we have gig work. We get paid by YouTube. We could just wait till it deposits into our banking system, possibly using bank feeds to record revenue at that time. But if we make sales at a cash register, restaurant, food truck, store or something like that, then we're going to have this added step, even though we're on a cash based system, we're going to collect cash at the same point in time we do the work or provide the goods and services, but we're going to have to accumulate that money and put it into our account for cash in the same format as it will be showing up on the bank statement. And that's going to be important for the bank reconciliations. If, however, we're in an industry like accounting firms, law firms, landscapers, where we have to do the work first and invoice the client, then we're gonna have to track the accounts receivable, receive the payment, and make the deposit. That's most of the businesses. However, we can also imagine a situation where we get the money first. Now, there's gonna be some uh, industries where that's just like the norm, for example, uh, the classic example is like a newspaper or magazine distributors because what normally you have to do on a revenue recognition principle at least on accrual on, and accrual concept would be that you don't recognize revenue until you earn it not when you get the cash and with magazine sales and stuff you might get a year's worth of a subscription first you got paid before you did the work that means that you owe the customer either the money back or the work, hopefully the work in the future so you don't have to give the money back. So what happened is you basically got the receive payment before you invoiced them. And you, you know, right, because you got the receive payment before you actually did the work, right? And so that's gonna be kind of backwards and that kind of throws a wrench into our revenue recognition system. Now we can also imagine that happening in uh, other industries, such as if we sell large things like uh, guitars in our case, we might want a down payment if someone wants a particular guitar. Someone comes into our shop, they say, hey, look, I want this guitar. We say, hey, 
Uh, that's an expensive guitar. We don't have it on hand, but we will order it from the vendor for you. However, in order to show us that you are committed to completing the purchase, we would like a down payment at this point in time. Therefore, we collect the money before we give them the guitar. Similar kind of thing happens in rental type of situations where you might say, I would like the last month's rent up front. Uh, will you? And so, so now you've got this prepayment for the rental of the property that you have not yet provided uh, in that sense as well. And also note that this is becoming more common in online businesses, this situation where you get paid first in a similar way as with the newspaper situation when you're talking about online um, application type of systems. So if you're gonna provide a, a subscription to your blog or something and they're paying you for a year's worth of subscription, well, that's similar to the magazine situation where you got money first before having, before you actually did the work. So on an accrual system, you would think that you would have to uh, deal with this unearned revenue. Now in practice, for taxes in the United States, small businesses might just be doing this for taxes and you might be okay in that case collecting the money and recording income when you collect the money uh, because the taxes, the tax man would be kind of happy with that, right? Because that means that you're actually paying them earlier when you collected, when you collected uh, the money. But for generally accounting purposes, generally accepted accounting principles, accrual accounting, then you should be tracking the unearned revenue kind of system. And when you have this, so we're gonna be looking at it with this deposit situation. Uh, so they're all kind of related. We're getting money first. So we owe the money back to the client or we owe them the goods or services. In our case, we're gonna be selling guitars. We're gonna get paid before uh, we actually provide the guitar with this down payment. Okay, now note that some accounting software, such as for example, QuickBooks, doesn't have the greatest tool uh, really to, to, to record it properly uh, because you're supposed to record a liability of unearned revenue. And the problem is that if I, if I record it to unearned revenue and not accounts receivable, I don't have that nice tracking of the subledger as I do when I record a receivable. So when you record something like this in other accounting software, oftentimes like a QuickBooks, for example, people re will record a negative accounts receivable because that will allow them to later create an invoice and apply the overpayment to the invoice. But Xero has a pretty nice uh, feature which allows us to properly record it as a liability and still have the capability of tracking that information in the customer section and applying it out to a future invoice. So that's like an advantage of Xero that I think is, uh, is interesting. It's a pretty neat uh, feature uh, that, that is quite, it's worth pointing out. So if I go to the, so if I go to the first, so if you're following along in like an Excel practice problem with this and doing a comparative problem in Excel, we might make a negative receivable uh, and then we're gonna adjust for it. Here, we're gonna do what a zero allows us to do, make the liability account, which properly records it at this point in time. All right, so how to do this? We're gonna hit the, we're gonna hit the plus button and we're gonna say that we want to have a receive money. So we're gonna get paid by the customer. And if you were doing like a like a, a sale of a guitar or something, you might make like an estimate form or something and, and then say, well, we're gonna have this amount of it as the down payment. Uh, but I'm just gonna say, it's gonna go into the checking account. So we're imagining someone has a guitar and we're gonna say, we want some money down in order for, for us to order the guitar and get the right color you want or whatever. So Sam, the guitar man guitar man is the customer so we already have them set up and it's going to be for 225 we have him set up 225 i'm going to say uh 225 all right and then the item that we're going to be having uh down here we're not going to have an item i'm just going to put a description down payment going to be a down payment type of situation for 250 and by the way I, I i'm the the important thing here is it's not a direct pay it's going to be a prepayment prepayment that's the thing that's going to give us this nice link so make sure to change that it changes this to like a yellow type of field and then i'm looking for a liability account 
So a liability account, I don't think they have one for us yet. So payroll, sales, loan payable, suspense. So I'm gonna call it a, a liability account that I will make up that'll be like unearned revenue or something like that. Or you could call it customer deposit. I'm gonna make a new account. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can find the proper account number. I need to find a good account number for it. So let's say it's gonna be uh, payroll, federal liability, state, uh, let's just make it 2250, 2250. Okay, let's do it. 2250, 2250 is open and available. So then we're gonna say the account is gonna be a liability type of account, current liability, and it's gonna be unearned revenue because we haven't yet earned it. Therefore, it's a liability and not on the income statement as a revenue account. You could call it customer deposit if you would like to too, which again, isn't an asset of a deposit. It's a liability because they've given you a down payment or deposit on a purchase they're gonna make in the future. All right, so there it is. So what's this going to do? Well, it's a receive money form. So it's gonna be increasing the checking account. And then the other side, we assigned it to go to the unearned revenue. So that's all great, but it also is going to be increasing or it's also gonna be tied to the client or customer of Sam the Guitar Man so that when we create a future invoice, we'll be able to tie this payment to it. And oftentimes if you hear this in terms of normal parlance, like when people are talking to each other, they might call it like uh, a credit. This is a customer credit. The customer has a credit. Now, why, does, why do we use that term? Notice it derives still from just debits and credits, just from a, an account. And this is kind of my, kind of my, something that kind of gets to me sometime because the changing of these words, debits and credits, have gotten kind of messed up uh, in the terminology, or they're they're just used in different ways. But really, debits and credits just mean left side and right side of the ledger. And so when you say that someone is crediting your account, this is our customer and we are crediting their account, which either means we're lowering the balance to it because it's an asset to us. So if, if, so, uh, if we credit it, we're gonna put something on the right side of the ledger, a credit, which is gonna lower the balance. Uh, or if they don't owe us any money, it's gonna be a credit that we can apply to future purchases. So credits are usually a good thing. So we hear credits being said as a good thing, right? The client, the client's so happy that we're gonna credit their account because to us it's a receivable and a credit means we're decreasing the receivable or, okay. So in any case, let's save it and uh, go back on over and see if it, okay, there it is, it's green. We're good to go update and let's see what happened. And we're gonna go into the checking account and uh, scroll on down. Scroll on down. There's the 250 uh, right there. Mui B to the end. The other side did not go to revenue, but rather went to a liability account because it's unearned. So he's gonna scroll down unearned revenue of the 250. Now, when I look at a sub ledger for the accounts receivable, it's not gonna show it. The sub ledger is still gonna tie out to this uh, 19. Uh, 8 1150 which is fine and we have because because the other amount is is a liability however i want to be able to logistically be able to tie this 250 out to the invoice that we're later going to cr create so i'd like to when we get the guitar be able to turn around and make that invoice as easily as possible so when i go back on to to our tracking this internally and say okay well, let's go to the to the business drop down and invoices and we'll go into our invoices and you can see if I, I could see it right there. If I go into awaiting payment, you've got this PP thing, which is great because that should be an indication that that's a, a prepayment, a prepaid amount. It's a credit, right? As they call it, right? It's a credit that has not been applied. It's an amount on the right side of the ledger, a credit to a particular client that has not been applied to an invoice and therefore if they purchased something then we could lower the amount you know by that that 250. if we also go to the contact information and i look at uh all let's just go to all customers 
and we're looking for Sam the Guitar Man. So Sam the Guitar Man, uh, when when they uh, come in, we've got this receive money of the 250. Here it is. And we see it says prepayment right there. So it says prepayment. And so now we can, the next step would be to create the invoice uh, from that prepayment. So really pretty neat that Zero does that. They, I think Zero actually handles this better than uh, the, the, you know, some chief rivals such as QuickBooks Online at this time. So now I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna go back to the first tab and let's try it again. So I'm gonna say that we have another one plus button. We're gonna say, uh, we're gonna say this is gonna be a receive money form. And note again, if you're following along with like an Excel problem, we, we may have put it into like a clearing account so that we can then deposit it into the checking account as one lump sum. But I'm gonna put it here directly into the checking account so we're gonna have three items in the checking account, which might throw us off a little bit on our bank reconciliation, but we'll see that uh, when we get there. So I'm gonna say continue. And we're gonna say, this is gonna be for Mr. Anderson. Anderson guitars. And this is gonna be on, let's say Feb 25, Feb 25. And uh, so again, I'm just gonna say, this is gonna be a uh, deposit, deposit, something like that. And this is going to be 300. Oh, by the way, I have to hit the drop down, making sure that I make this a prepayment. That's the key point here. And then this is going to be unearned revenue, unearned revenue. So same thing. What's this going to do? It's going to, it's a receive money. So it's going to go into the checking account for the 300. The other side is going to go into unearned revenue as we assigned here. And it's going to give us that nice link tracking by the customer so that when we actually invoice Anderson for the guitar, we can pull in that 300 of the customer credit or prepayment at that time. So let's save it. There's that one. All right, let's do one more. So I'm going to hit the drop down again. And let's say we're going to say a receive money form and similar kind of process. We got these people now that the words out that we're going to call it a down payment. They could do the down payment thing. We've got these customers flowing in like crazy. Hopefully we can finish the deal. So this is Eric music. Eric music comes in and they let's make this 225 too, as well. February 25. And we're gonna say this is a deposit, deposit, customer deposit that is. That's what we're talking about there. One, and let's say $200 deposit this time going into unearned revenue. Unearned revenue. And I gotta make sure that it's not a direct pay. I want a prepayment. So it, it gives that credit to the customer account. So what's this gonna do? It's gonna increase the checking account. The other side's gonna be going into the uh unearned revenue which i just thought i did that i thought i did that already unearned revenue and but it's also going to give us that prepayment now again if you're following along with excel or comparing this to like another accounting software then uh we we may have put it directly into the clearing account and in there it would record an, a negative receivable possibly but here it's going to properly record the liability because zero has that capability, which is super cool. So we'll say, okay, let's go to the balance sheet and update it. So, so if you're following along with an Excel problem, we might've put it into a clearing account here. We put it just directly into the checking account. So we got those three items deposits into the checking account. The other side is going into the unearned revenue. So if I go into the unearned revenue, we have those three amounts that are recorded there for three different uh, customers scrolling back up. Then the accounts receivable is properly recorded now. So we don't have like any negative receivables using this format uh, here, which is great. And we could still track it by uh, and be able to apply our prepayments, our customer credits by going to the first tab. And if I go to the accounting dropdown and we look at our uh, invoices, uh, not the accounting drop down, the business and the invoices, then we can see we have these three right there that are waiting 
to be applied out when we make a future payment. So once these customers come in, we could say, oh, yeah, I can see you got your deposit there. So we'll go ahead and apply that to an invoice and complete the process. Okay, so we're gonna continue on with the invoicing and whatnot in future presentations. So now let's open up our trusty trial balance and just see where we stand. So we're gonna hit the, let's go to over here, accounting reports and open up the trial balance to check out the numbers, trial balance and we will change the range up top change in the date range custom date 2023 the end of end of it and update to make it up to date so then we're gonna scroll down and this is where we stand if your numbers tie out to these numbers great if not then uh try changing the date range if your numbers tied out last time and they're off this time the things that we changed were of course the checking account and the unearned revenue. So you would think one of those two would be the things that were off if you were on last time. And so if it's a date range thing, change the range, drill down on the number that's changed, and then drill down to the source document, possibly a, a receive money form, and then correct it uh, if that's the issue.